Hey guys, my name is James DeGrasanis, and here's a little video on electronic precautions, safety and security in a digital age. Uh, this is only my second video, so uh, bear with me. But we're going to talk about um, a quick synopsis of how to protect yourself and your data in this digital age. So obviously we need to talk about self-protection because that's the whole point of this. Um, self-security has many goals. However, your primary objective is to interfere and defeat those who are attempting to steal your data. Whether that's a hacker or a phishing scam or a computer virus that is looking to steal your data, um, a good example is your bank data. How many of us have had our bank account data stolen before? Because I have. Um, you feel beyond violated. There really isn't anything to describe how you feel. Um, had I known more about digital protection and self-protection, I may not have had that issue. Uh, I can't be sure. but. I am sure that I definitely needed more protection than what I had. Um, even simple issues, just like a uh, an unsecured Wi-Fi network that opens you up to data theft and hacking and viruses and everything else. So if you don't have an unsecured Wi-Fi, go change it right now. It'll take you about 15 seconds to change your password. Um, we have to look at security in layers. And by that, I mean, if you picture an old medieval castle, how many walls did that thing have? Tons. It had walls, moats. It had trenches. Um, it, it had everything that it needed for defense, and that's the way we need to look at it. And it was layered defense. It was not just one one thing. It was multiple things. Um, that's the way we need to picture our security now, because if one wall is breached, there's another one right behind it to defend you. Um, we've all gotten a virus before, annoying as all can be. Uh, there's a lot of good companies out there. Uh, McAfee, AVG, Avira, and Norton are pretty much the real big ones. Um, they are very good, but there's a cost associated to it. But the other flip side of that coin is that, can you put a price on your data? And it depends how you look at it. I don't think you can, um, having been the victim of several data breaches before. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll pay a good uh, chunk of change for it. But thankfully, since I switched over to Mac, I haven't had any issues at all. So thank you, Apple computers. You guys are great. Um, but you got to look at viruses because most viruses are data miners. They're looking to seek personal information, passwords, and other critical data. And depending on how much exposure you have to the internet and online, um, weekly virus scans are a must, maybe even daily. Um, at work where I work, we're still using uh, IBM Toughbooks, and they do virus scans daily. We have to to make sure that there's no breaches or anything like that. Backing up your data is another critical aspect. Um, I will tell you a quick story of how several years ago that I decided in my infinite wisdom that I wanted to uh, back up my files. Well, I backed them up so well that I deleted them all. Um, again, that was one of those feelings of just utter despair because I lost several years worth of photos. Thankfully, I was able to get some of them back, but for the most part, I lost a lot of them. And uh, it, still, it still bothers me to this day. Um, so I'll back up your data, and that means an external hard drive. External hard drives are very inexpensive. You can buy terabyte, two terabyte, multi terabyte size um, backup exterior hard drives for almost nothing. Uh, I have several of them now. And also, we have to think power outages. We live in New England, we get thunderstorms, so we have trees come down on top of the wires. Um, if you can imagine losing all your work due to a power outage or a short on your computer, that's a big problem. Cloud-based storage is really popular. We started using that where I work as well. Um, the only problem with that is it can be very expensive. And right now it is expensive because we're storing terabytes of video data. Um, I already ran out of cloud storage on my brand new MacBook Air here. And so I get notifications all the time. You need to purchase more storage. You need to purchase more storage. So again, it depends how much money you want to spend on it. The plus side of the cloud is that it is instantaneously available to you, um, whereas an external hard drive, you have to kind of cart it around. So again, it's personal preference, what you're willing to deal with and what you really want, at the accessibility at your fingertips. Um, surge protector and control, huge. Um, surge protectors, you need them for every computer and television. I lost a television a couple years ago to a surge and it's annoying and I would really hate to lose my computer, especially in the middle of recording a YouTube video because that would not be so great. Um, fewer extension cords as well. I know many of you who have gone through any type of uh, fire prevention, one of the big things they tell you are no, no to extension cords. Um, the closer you are to the breakers, 
uh, it matters. It matters big time. So modern fuses and wiring are also kind of critical. Uh, we, well, at least I live in New England, and there's a lot of older houses here, and many of those houses have been updated since they were built, and the wiring is old and needs to be replaced. That all comes into play with surge protection and fire hazards. So my wife and I, another short story, as you can tell, I'm a storyteller. We always argue about who's got the charger for the laptops because we have the exact same laptop and my wife usually leaves hers at work or I leave mine at work and we're scrambling to find a spare charger. Chargers don't cost much and always having a spare one around is not a bad idea, especially considering if you do have a surge, chances are you may fry that uh, surge protector and the charger. So another one is not a bad idea and they're not very expensive. So Wired Magazine, I don't really read Wired very much, but I kind of started to after uh, enrolling in this class because it's important. There's a lot of uh, information out there. There's a lot of new technology that's emerging. And as educators, we need to be educated in those areas. Uh, sorry, I had to throw a quick little joke in there. But Wired Magazine does a great little article on the threat model. And what is a threat model? Good question. Well, here's your answer. Everyone has their own threat model. It's a uh, set of concerns unique to themselves. The average smartphone user doesn't need to know what a Faraday cage is. And they have a very good point is, what is your level of literacy when it comes to your threat model? Do you even understand the threats that are coming your way? So you need to think, sit back and think about what are your concerns. And then on top of that, if you want to think even more, uh, for, more far reaching, what are your concerns and what are your concerns are they global enough to protect you? Meaning, yes, you may have one layer of defense, but is that, is that really enough if you're exposing your computer, therefore yourself and your home to the entire world through the internet? Um, you really need to consider that because there's a lot of ill will people out there, albeit small when it compared to the rest of the population, but still those people are out there and they're constantly thinking of ways to defeat your security and f mine your personal data. So you gotta be cognizant of that. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was short and I'm getting better at this and I uh, hope you learned something.